Hello, I'm Tom Long. For a long time, I have found myself praying for my own grandchildren, uh, the grandchildren of my wife, my siblings, her siblings, uh, that they would develop the ability to uh, creatively express themselves. And one of the drivers for that is that as a young person, I learned to play the guitar and I love music. It's just been something that has enriched my life all the way through and, and I want that blessing for those kids. And in this last year, I've added to that um, prayers that they would develop competence in science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, but as I read through this, this week's Old Testament pericope, I had to ask myself whether I had been missing something in my prayers for all of our grandchildren. In this week's epistle reading, we're in the second half of Ephesians, where Paul describes the way that believers should conduct themselves. Our reading is part of the subsection where Paul talks about living as children of light. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Despite the Greek tripartite understanding of human nature being composed of body, mind, and spirit, Paul here presents a very organic picture of the Christ follower, where body, mind, and spirit are inextricably interwoven. He begins by addressing wisdom when he wrote, Be very careful then how you live. He used a figure of speech for living. A literal translation would be to be careful how you walk. His language harkens back to Old Testament language. The wise person does God's will. A fool is someone who acts like there's no God and therefore no need to worry about what God's will is. So, if we think about the last verse of Psalm 111, which says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, it makes sense. Now, the word translated fear here is sometimes used to describe being afraid of something. But according to Hebrew scholars, when used with respect to God, it carries a meaning beyond that. It means reverence. So when Paul talks about the wise person, he is talking about a person who reveres God and seeks to do God's will. And he intensifies that by going on to say that we may quote the most of every opportunity to do God's will because the days are evil, unquote. Making the most of every opportunity is to seize the day. Don't just drift through life, but look for every opportunity to walk in step with God's will. Then Paul throws in that alert, because the days are evil. Now, Paul isn't saying that everybody in the world is bad and dangerous and we should be acting out of a place of fear. He's making the point that walking in God's will is countercultural. Back in 1 Kings 3, when God asked Solomon what he could give him, Solomon answered, quote, Give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong, unquote. And God was impressed because Solomon didn't have the secular mindset of give me wealth, give me power, give me long life, choosing instead to play a role in providing for the welfare of God's people. The church acts in a milieu of people looking out for number one. Wisdom, discerning justice, and right and wrong is a, is a way to show reverence for God and making it a priority to care for the welfare of others. 
And we're to be intentional about making sure that every opportunity we have to do that is taken. At the beginning of this meditation, I mentioned my prayers that our family's grandchildren be enriched by the creative arts and develop competence in STEM. And initially, as I read this week's lesson, I thought to myself that I had neglected to pray for their wisdom. But once I delved into what the Bible means by wisdom, I realized that I had been praying for their wisdom because I'd prayed that God would guide them in their decision making and protect them from going off in destructive directions. The last part of our reading talks about not yielding control of our lives to anyone or anything besides the Lord alone. Don't lose control of your life to alcohol, drugs, or any other obsession. Instead, live a life in community with one another, filled with God's Spirit. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is presented here not as something that happens to an individual, but that happens to a faith community that builds one another up through creative arts, springing from a heart for the Lord. Quote, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, unquote. And finally, we circle, circle around to gratitude, always giving thanks to God. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for Solomon's example and his humble request for wisdom. Guide us as we seek your wisdom in our own lives, helping us to make decisions that honor you and work for the blessings of others. May we continually grow in understanding and be inspired to apply your teachings daily. As we go forth, may your blessings be upon our community, guiding us in all we do. Amen.